you are welcome to my channel uh, in this video we are going to be looking at the common substantive procedures yeah these procedures you can twist them to fit any transaction to fit any account balance yeah in any way that you want so like they are common like you can use them anywhere yeah so we are going to start with the completeness assertion yeah like how can you come up with the substantive procedures so the first substantive procedure is a select a sample of items and then trace it to the records to see if they they are matching so this can work for inventory and then property plant and equipment because for it it has to physically be there like you have to touch it so you select a sample of maybe the inventory that is in the store and then you trace it to the supporting records to see if uh, it was recorded like all of it was recorded it was complete or you select a sample of uh, property plant and equipment and then you trace it to the supporting records to see if uh, they recorded all of it that's for completeness so select a sample of items and then trace it to the supporting records so in case you're answering a question on ppe you say select a sample of um, property plant and equipment and trace it to its records to confirm completeness in case it's on inventory select a sample of item of inventory items and trace it to its supporting records to confirm completeness yeah then um, the next one so the next one is like uh, the opposite of this okay Select a sample of uh, GDNs, goods received notes, invoices, and trace it to the general ledger of financial statements for completeness. So this applies to other transactions, other transactions like uh, purchases. It can also apply to inventory, purchases, inventory, sales, revenue, accounts receivables, accounts payables. Yeah, all that. So you just, as long as you know the documents here, you just keep changing the names of the documents. So in case you're dealing with sales, to confirm completeness of sales, you say select a sample of um, goods delivered notes or invoices and trace it to the general ledger of financial statements to confirm completeness. In case you're dealing with purchases, you say select a sample of goods received notes then and purchases invoices and trace it to the general ledger of financial statements to confirm completeness so that's how you do it the statement is the same you just keep twisting that's how it works and then when it comes to things like um when it comes to things like sales and then purchases then also inventory this also applies you calculate gross profit margin and compare with the previous year and then the industry average to confirm completeness so this applies to the sales the purchases inventory yeah so you calculate gp and compare with the previous year and then industry average then when you're dealing with things like uh, the account receivables you'll be like you you calculate the account receivables days and compare with the previous year and then the industry average does it have an industry average you compare with the previous year yeah stuff like that so for completeness let me repeat the hack we start from uh, we start from the records. Sorry. And we start from the documents. 
to to the statement or genealogy. Or we start from the let me say for inventory and PPE, we start from the store. Store. Then we go to the statements or genealogy. So when you're coming up with substantive procedures for completeness, you just follow this format even when you've never seen something. If they ask you about something that you've never seen, but you want to come up with a substantive procedure for completeness, you be like, you select a sample of that item, select a sample of that item, and then trace it to its records or to the financial statements or general ledger to confirm completeness. Or you can be like, you, you select a sample of the documents, of the documents and then trace it to the financial statements or general ledger to confirm competence. Yeah, it's the reason why here we say select a sample of goods received notes. So you are starting from the documents, then trace it to the general ledger or financial statements to this to confirm whether they were recorded completely. Hope you get that. For completeness, we go forward. So these are the common substantive procedures that you can use almost everywhere. Then for existency, this is the common one. Select a sample of uh, items from the records and physically inspect it. Like select a sample of an asset that was recorded, maybe in the statement of financial position, which is balance sheet and then trace it back to see if it is actually there in the store, in the garage, stuff like that. So this is the common substantive procedure for existency, physically inspecting something. So you select, you come from the records, then physically inspect physical from the records, then you see if it is actually there in real life. That's how we confirm existence and existence is for account balances, the things that appear in the in the balance sheet, the assets, mainly assets. Yeah. So this is the main substantive procedure for existency. So when it comes to rates and obligations, these are the common substantive procedures that you can use anywhere as long as you're confirming rates and obligation. So rates and obligation, it's also for account balances, the things that appear in the balance sheet, the assets, liabilities, stuff like that. So first there's a inquire from management, like ask management whether they own the thing or not, or whether they are being demanded or not. So inquire from management, that's the first one. Yeah. Then uh, review board minutes. Review board minutes for to see whether there was permission given to purchase a particular asset or to obtain a particular loan. So you can review board minutes. Then select a sample of items and trace it to the agreements in the names of the company. So the agreement must be in the name of the company. So you select a sample of what was recorded in the in the balance sheet, let me say, they say that they bought a car, a salon car. So they bought a car. So this car was recorded in the balance sheet. So you select this car 
and then you you go and find its agreements the agreements that we exchanged when they were buying this car and these agreements must be in the names of the company and this will help you to confirm that the company has a rate over this car because they have an agreement in their names then in case of liability if they say that maybe they obtained a loan over five um blah blah so you select that loan and then trace it to supporting agreements the loan agreements like the amount it shows the amount of the loan the name of the company the interest and the payment period yeah, so these are the common ways of confirming rates and obligation inquire from management review board minutes select a sample of a particular item and then trace it to its agreements that are in the names of the company that will help you to confirm rates and obligation then for accuracy how we confirm accuracy the main substantive procedure is recalculation recalculation of uh, something yeah maybe when it comes to inventory inventory is counted so you do a test count you recal you recount the inventory and see if it is accurate so for confirming accuracy you recalculate stuff in case of property plant and equipment you can recalculate depreciation of the asset to confirm if it's accurate or not then when it comes to cut off cut off remember you're making sure that something is recorded in the correct accounting period so the common substantive procedure that can be used anywhere is um, obtain a number of the last GDNs. So for GDN, it deals with sales. So in case you're dealing with the sales, you'll be like obtain a, the number of the last GDNs before and after the year end and check whether they were recorded in the correct period. Full stop. In case you're dealing with purchases, obtain a number of the last goods received notes and then check whether they were recorded in the correct period then uh, in case you are dealing with inventory you use both obtain number of the last gdns and grns before and after the year end and check whether they were recorded in the correct period so this applies almost everywhere then presentation Presentation, it applies everywhere. Everywhere. Like, review financial statements and disclosures for compliance with the applicable accounting standards. So, in case you are sure of the accounting standard, you can add it. Like, in case you're dealing with property, plant and equipment, you can be like, review financial statements and disclosures for compliance with IAS. 16 in case you're sure but if you're not sure you be like applicable accounting standards full stop then classification it is all it, it also has uh, the same substantive procedure same for everything that you come across so select sorry inspect a sample of documents documents can be like sales invoices purchases invoices sales receipts purchase receipts select a sample of um, documents for proper classification as per the chart of accounts yeah so those are the common substantive procedures in case you are not sure over like anything you can just rate them the way i've given them to you and they have they have asked you maybe for substantive procedures su substantive pro procedures for the sales system purchases system property plant and equipment yeah but there's some things that you should put a keen eye on 
for example, valuation, valuation of PPE, it has its own unique substantive procedures. So there, you can take note of that, take note of uh, inventory, the audit procedures before the inventory count, then during the inventory count, and then after the inventory count, they are common. Then also cash, cash and bank balances, that thing of the bank confirmation procedures, then cash count, the procedures that are supposed to be followed during the cash count and then after the cash count. Yeah. So you should take note of that. In case you come across anything that has to do with substantive procedures and you are not sure, like use these substantive procedures that have given you, you just keep changing the name of the system. Yeah, sales, purchases, depending on what they have asked for. Yeah, thanks for watching. Do not forget to subscribe, like, comment, share with your friends. Let's catch up in my next video.